Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture, and we got another solo album review from the newest project from James McMurtry called The Horses and the Hounds. We don't often get albums like this, and when I say that, I'm referring to a specific stripe of singer-songwriters that might as well be goddamn poets in their own right, even if they've made a point to say they haven't touched proper verse in years. The writing is often the centerpiece, for better or worse, and given the relative scarcity of their releases, it winds up feeling like an event when new material drops. But you know what? Even the event kind of feels different. These are not acts that usually get the traditional hype cycle, unless you got the popular stat or a Bob Dylan type, and given that they're often older, it can be even a slow burn online. So it's more like the slow build of a great book that you need time to sit with, and audiences will be just as slow to get to it. And it's not just old weathered folkies or Americana acts here either. A lot of older rappers will usually fall in this territory as well, but as someone who loves lyricism and writing first and foremost, I tend to have particular taste in this territory, but this is the sort of stuff that always tends to notch some spots on the year-end list for me. Think about Bill Callahan or Terry Allen from last year. And I'll admit, when I heard about James McMurtry potentially dropping a new project this year, I was thrilled. The album was reportedly getting written and cut back in 2019, but with delays courtesy of the pandemic, we weren't going to see a release for a while if you couldn't tour properly. Now, for those of you who don't remember, and I wouldn't be surprised, Surprise, the album came out back in 2015, but it was one of the best albums of that year, Complicated Game, and his song Long Island Sound was my favorite song of that year. And while I've got a couple nitpicks with that project in terms of pacing and just how bleak it can get, this was not going to cut down on my excitement with this one, especially with the buzz suggesting it was actually a little bit more upbeat, leaning into some rougher edges and southern rock, which James McMurtry has proven that he can sell effectively. So even this is just going to be something that only I care about. I really wanted to give it some proper airtime and exposure, so what do we get from The Horses and the Hounds? Well, unsurprisingly, it wound up pretty damn interesting. I mean, the obvious statement is that it's a pretty fantastic singer-songwriter project from one of the most perennially underrated acts in this field that'll wind up getting slept on by pretty much everyone. But for me, a lot of this is more about placing this project in context with James McMurtry's previous albums. And on that note, while I don't think it's got a song on the level of Long Island Sound to put it completely over the top, I would argue this is a more consistent, upbeat, and overall accessible project all the way through. Ergo, if you're a little bit intimidated to pick up a new James McMurtry album given some of his catalog and his pedigree, I would feel pretty comfortable giving you this as an opening. In a way, it kind of reminds me of how Jason Isbell followed up something more than free with the Nashville sound, in terms of ratcheting up a lot of the tension, exposing more raw nerves. But James McMurtry is in his own cantankerous animal. And for me, this became amazingly easy to revisit time and time again. And if that's not an easy recommendation, I don't know what is. And that's also the thing. If I say, yeah, James McMurtry's making Southern Rock, a fan of his might already have an idea of what it's going to sound like. Solidly warm blends of electric and acoustic guitar with the occasional solo that's never showy but always satisfying, a lot of good bass lines, the occasional splash of organ and keyboards. But I gotta say, the devil's in the details with this one. For one, the pacing is markedly better than Complicated Game, which for all of its slow burn, heavier moments could definitely drag in some Patches and does make it kind of a tough re-listen by the very end. Now this time around, James McMurtry is writing faster, rougher, burlier material. Fewer moments of mature, slow burn melancholy and more bringing tension to bear in the guitar lines. Hell, I'd argue that the opening and closing tracks are probably the most sedate on this album, and even they keep a pretty decent clip. But in going in this direction, he also doesn't sacrifice the refinement of a lot of these compositions. The melodic interplay and the hooks are terrific, especially and driving some recognizable tunes and motifs. The bass lines are consistently great and well-balanced. This album actually has some groove to it. There's even some touches of atmospherics to flesh out some depth in the mix, augment the organ, the piano, and touches of cello and accordion. No, I will say the album doesn't take as many risks in its compositions as Complicated Game did in terms of tonal selection or out there pivots. One criticism I can see being made here is that it can feel kind of uniform musically if you're not paying attention to the the details in the writing.
writing. But you know what? When it's so uniformly great with some real sticky hooks and rarely a misstep, I'm not complaining here. I love the slightly rougher edges in the vocal pickup and the riff alongside a mostly major key song in Operation Nevermind in order to sell some of that buried tension. I love how Jackie uses sleigh bells in a more desolated mix to sell the painstaking balance living on the edge, accentuated by some of the quiet romance and grief in the strings. I love the smolder behind Fairart Walton Wake Up Call and how the jangling interplay of What's the Matter nails that gentle feeling of exasperation. And I really like how James McMurtry sells the mid-tempo opener and closer, where there's enough space on the songs to capture the words against the sandy percussion, or how intentionally jarring the brighter vibe of Decent Man is, given that it's a murder ballad. Now that being said, I do have two minor nitpicks here, the first being some of the Spanish touches on Vaquero. I mean, you see this a lot from a lot of Texas singer-songwriters these days, and I don't deny the kinship that James McMurtry might feel, but even with some of the accordion and that groove, it feels a little bit more awkward than it should. What I did find distracting was some of the female backing vocals, though, especially in the title track. They're not quite as well blended as his lead vocal, and while they do make sense for this style of Southern rock, they also feel a little bit thin and can be otherwise distracting. But again, these are very minor complaints. We're primarily here to talk about the songwriting and the lyricism, and where James McMurtry himself is of little help, as the most he, what he tends to add in the interviews tends to dance around themes or even his methods of writing, outside of emphasizing the fiction of these stories and pushing back against extrapolating any further, implying that they're not entirely autobiographical. And again, James McMurtry is a really damn solid writer. Just in terms of poetic meter and a naturalistic flaw, along with the description to flesh out the pictures, he's one of the best working right now, bringing a level of idiosyncratic but very human detail that grounds his stories, but also lends them texture, especially given so many characters that are left on the brink and really need the texture to sell them. I'd also caution about calling this album more political, especially as some of James McMurtry's most famous songs are in that lane, like We Can't Make It Here Anymore. His left-leaning side is present in side details and passing lines rather than direct targets, like on Fort Walden Wake Up Call, where his character is annoyed that it's just Fox News fictions playing, and he wonders without the Mexicans how they build a wall anyway, but it's built more in the context of the song, and he's more about how the game that he's betting on isn't on the TV, another in the pileup of little annoyances that constantly pester him on that track. Incidentally, his borderline rapping cadence on the song is legit excellent, especially in that primary line in the hook, which does kind of fit into an interesting boundary of someone who is reaching middle age. Now probably the most targeted song is Operation Nevermind, writing from the perspectives of soldiers at war and veterans at home, ignored and consistently neglected in poverty until the government wants to put them on stage at ball games for recruitment, not really caring to broadcast their truth when they can't wring entertainment out of it, and when the masses would rather just watch TV and play Black Ops instead. And you can tell how righteously pissed he is about this. It's a common theme in his work for the past couple of years, but it's also not a song that shows that anger openly. The tension's buried beneath the surface, the problems are choked back, and there's a quiet, tired desperation that frames some stark moments on this album. I brought up Decent Man earlier, and I want to highlight how plainly McMurtry sketches the scene of a failed farmer who, for no good reason, gets up one day, leaves his family behind, and then shoots his more successful friend. You'd almost expect it to be played for comedy, except except it's not, letting the utter irrationality of his actions hang in the air, and yet giving you enough bright melody to dare you to actually sympathize with someone who is pushed to that brink, just kind of feels more real that way. And yet it's that very human release of tension that flies in the face of reason that gives this album a lot of power for me. 2021 has had a decent number of albums that drill into that sense of emotionality, even going for sweeping anthems in the face of the world opening back up, look at that last Bleachers album. But James McMurtry's framing is a lot more complex than that, mostly because this was all written before the pandemic, and there are other factors that go in beyond pure autobiography. One continuing theme that some folks have highlighted following Complicated Gang is getting older, seeing time push James McMurtry's characters further to that brink, but it's also not consistently true here, because where the last album used the passage of time to feel more settled and grounded, this is one that yanks that stability from all of its characters 
hell if they even had that stability to begin with. That's one reason I actually drew a parallel to the Nashville sound. But where that was explicitly autobiographical, McMurtry is casting his gaze broader. I love the long overdue connection of Canola Fields, where he ponders an old friend where they might have had a torch at some point, but at this point in their life, why not see what's there and hook up? And we see a similar relationship show up in the details of Jackie, telling a story of a rancher and a long haul trucker who's struggling to get by in the early winter, where she's lived too long to expect a faithful romance and just trying to tough it out, see that her horses survive, only for her to die tragically in an accident, because sometimes life will just punish you even more for no goddamn good reason. Uh, so yeah, some of the bleakness of Complicated Game, it's absolutely back here, but the lack of bigger answers doesn't crush the album so much as feel like the impetus to try and savor more of the life, which materializes most in the quasi-touring songs If It Don't Bleed and What's the Matter. Now, the latter takes a more of a harried, kind of exasperated approach and trying to balance out a family with a hard life on the road, but it's the former that feels more revealing of his ethos. He's not seeking salvation, being on his knees is too close to Jesus as it is. He's found a routine that's probably not healthy for him, but it works. And so long as it bleeds, where it's tactile, where it's real, he can trust it. He'll stick to it. It's one reason I don't quite love the Road Warrior posturing of the title track, or the plays to more abstract scenes on Vaquero. Neither quite feel as potent as they really could, but it's why I absolutely love the closer of the album, Blackberry Winter, which seems to speak to someone who has seen their children leave and is now openly questioning what their purpose in life now is in a bleak, cold, unpredictable world. And I like that it's left ambiguous whether Jason Murtry is a partner, an ex, or just a friend in the scene. I like how he adds the detail how without a purpose this person has never really learned to just live which is way too common in our world, and how that now newfound possibility terrifies her, and if he can fill a role to any kind, he'd just be there to tell her no. It's not a saving people thing so much as a boundary, reassure her her life still has value, and when the song ends and she's taken off wherever, he at least hopes that she'll find something on the next steps of her life's journey that'll keep her going. It's the pull away from pure bleakness that still actually values life, even if he's not a part of it. Which is that added level of lived-in maturity that I've always loved from James McMurtry, and it's a huge reason why his albums age so well. I can go back to this in 10 years and probably feel the same emotions, if not more powerfully. But to tie it all together, ugh, look. James McMurtry is one of the very best at taking a sure hand to capture messy reality. And if that means it takes five plus years to get a new album, I'm fine with that. Especially as this is one that has yet to wear out its welcome after so many listens. Again, I would argue this is one of his most accessible and approachable albums to date. Maybe a little more targeted at an older audience, to be sure. But with a lot of these themes, they're painted with such detail. They're so well constructed. I would argue any fan of this type of singer-songwriter material, you'd have a a field day. Hell, just for great writing in general. Ergo, light 9 out of 10. The highest of my recommendations. This is going to get slept on by entirely too many. Y'all want to give it a lot of listens. Check it out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Yeah, I know, I'm a little late to this one, and I know not a lot of you are going to care to watch this, but you really should. The album is excellent. I had so much fun with it. And hey, if you want to talk about the album down below, have fun. It's the comments. We're going to need some exposure and really engagement to get this one going. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And hey, if you guys want to get albums on my schedule going ahead, link to my Patreon is right over there. I've also got access to my Discord over there. Hey, I'd be happy to have you come on board. Don't feel any obligation, but if you want to, there it is. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.